It's two hours long too, huh? Yeah, but yeah, you would think it kind. It's like you think it would kind of drag on, but with him and his personality, he's so open and he's very humorous and he makes the experience very enjoyable and so um yeah it it doesn't feel like it's so long and he's very he's pretty interactive as well oh okay there he is yay oh Oh. my phone just rang five times i am so sorry oh it's totally fine i was just like (laughs) School ended this week, and so I finally got time to decompress and, yeah, just relax. So I've just been, oh, yeah, trying to decompress, you know. Okay. Huh, so how are you all doing? How's it going? Hey, how pretty how good. I'm, we're I'm, just curious. We're good. I'm really happy you came on. I was just telling um Steven um uh how was the class like and how many people typically show up and with the time the length of time for this class and um I said that because you're such a open vulnerable and um Mm -hmm. vibrant person that the class time it just goes it's so interactive that you just don't really think about how long the class is and uh yeah so that's what i was telling you (laughs) well thank you so much well thank you so much yeah you know i just think it's really hmm, i just think it's really important that 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 if we're going to tap into this stuff it really just means the world to me that people are willing to dig into this stuff and take your own feelings seriously and it's just so not easy. It's just so not easy. And hey, while we're on that subject, let me also just say this. I got a lot of stuff going on in my life. I'm relocating. My, I, I thought I was dating someone. I'm not dating someone. It turned out the guy I thought I was dating actually scammed me. Uh, I'm actually in the process of filing for bankruptcy right now because of the scam that occurred. Um, my friend, my wonderful friend from college came over to, to you know help me. To, 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 he actually just gave me his arms and held me and let me cry in his arms. It was just beautiful. I've, yeah, so, so a whole bunch of shifting and changing is going on in my life right now. And I am doing the work like crazy and digging into it and, oh, doing so much growing, so much growing, so much growing from it. And, you know, the whole reason why I do all this is is precisely because it's because we're we're practicing this because when the real shit happens in life, when, you know, when they, when these moments really occur, it won't be a first time. You'll know how to deal with your feelings. So that way you won't go off the deep end. (laughs) You'll know how to manage through it. Even if it's difficult, life can be difficult. Or or what, what did I, what did I hear? What did I hear? Um, Life can be hard. Death can be hard. Choose your hard. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, freedom is hard. Slavery is hard. <laughs> Choose your hard. <laughs> you know, um, doing what you want to do in life is hard. Doing what someone else wants you to do in life is hard. Choose your hard. Life is hard, but you get to choose your heart. So, what happens to you is one thing. How you choose to deal with it in life is always something else. And I say, whatever happens in life, if you can find a way to learn to dig into your feelings, question what you are thinking, build compassion for yourself, then you know you're doing the, you're doing. Uh, you are learning skills for your life that, frankly, are priceless. Priceless. That's what I would say, priceless. Jeff Bezos can't even do those things, okay? Priceless. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, so this is the regular course. I should say I'm, I'm Dr. Donnie here. 
And I put all these courses together from a workbook called The Book of You. And if you stick around for the uh, advanced course, I will give you the workbook. And if any of this stuff helps you at all, you know, at any time, consider leaving a donation. And I always say the best donation you can possibly give is just your time, your energy, and your feelings, and your feelings. So this week, this week we are, let's see here. I believe we are on week three. Excellent. So just a quick uh, run through of what we went through over the course of the month here. We started off with the self-care plan. You know, we actually talked about what is self-care and how to take care of ourselves in a bunch of different ways. What do you honestly do versus what would be a healthier option? Oh, and let me share this, by the way. Let me really share this. Put this in the chat window here. And there we go. You can access that at any time. Uh, and of course, the most important thing in my class is just to relax, okay? We're digging into our feelings today. Digging into our feelings is all about um, sensitive, soft stuff. So it's really important to get into a space where you feel comfortable taking in this information, okay? So don't ever feel like you have to bombard yourself with reading a bunch of things. You are always more than welcome to just close your eyes. Um, just so you know, I have a stuffed animal right here <laughs> that I keep with me. He's my emotions dog, okay? <laughs> he helps me get through whatever I'm feeling. He has lots of different feelings, okay? <laughs> okay, my emotions dog, okay? Good old emotions dog. He helps me through. He helps me through everything, okay? So he's sitting right here helping all of us, okay? Okay. Uh, so week one, we had the self-care plan. We did an intro into meditation where I talked about the mind. We did an exercise on how to tell yourself the truth, which was all about feelings. And then we straight up talked about trauma. And you had, you had exercises for helping yourself deal with traumatic feelings, okay? So I hope you practiced all those things. Last week, there was uh, just a list of emotions, just to put your feelings into words. And then we did a Byron Katie Judge Your Neighbor worksheet and a self-love, acceptance, and validation exercise. And so today we're doing meditating on emotions, or what's called emotional vipassana and a body scan meditation. Okay, so page 18. So it's gonna be a lot of sinking in today, a lot of sinking in today. Actually, let's just take one moment. Let's just take one moment before we sink in and see if we can put our feelings into words. Let's just make a space here. Does anybody wanna say how they feel today and put their feelings into a feeling word? Mm. Okay, well, to be honest with you, given what I'm going through in life right now, depressed my, my spleen pretty well. Many of these words would display, explain how I feel, although it's funny. I could say I feel depressed, but I also, and, and I also feel, and I also feel, um, interested, I can go with that. I feel, cause I feel like deflated in a lot of ways and un, un, just, just unfortunate fault finding, a little guilty. I feel, I feel a bunch of these feelings but I also feel curious. I'm, I'm a little intrigued, intrigued about where my life's going and open and, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so let me make space. If anybody would like to say how they feel. Oh, 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 oh. optimistic, hopeful. Eager, optimistic, hopeful, eager, lovely, lovely, lovely. Hmm, that's a nice feeling sandwich right there. Hmm, all right. Anyone else? Anyone else want to say how you're feeling? You're more than welcome to type or speak, whatever is comfortable for you. And you're more than welcome to not say anything also.
you are more than welcome to just look at the list. I mean, geez, there's so many feelings there, you know, just take it all in. And I can talk a little bit more too. You know, most of us learn to just say words like, you know, good, bad. How are you feeling? Yeah. <laughs> That's your answer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot of people, especially in California, are really big on not even being able to say you feel bad at all. You know, just I'm having a shitty day. Like you just can't even say I'm having a shitty day out here. You got to pretend like everything's fine all the time. You, you just like living your California life. Yeah, well, well, you know, not honoring your feelings is kind of a type of, uh, you know, like self-abandonment. Your feelings are your real, the real you, you know, how you feel is how, what's really going on in your inner life, right? So it's just so important to put words, put consciousness, bring consciousness to your feelings. Okay. So just take note of all the just amazing things that are here. And then maybe as you go through life, if you start trying to think about how you feel, you can revisit this list and uh, yeah, add these things to your vocabulary. Okay, I just can't, can't stress it enough. Okay. So we're going to go, uh, we're going to, learn how to actually sit with our feelings today. So that's so the first, that little bit up there was trying to put it into words. The rest of class, you don't have to say a word of any kind whatsoever. Oh, 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 here's another one. Loved, helpless, but cared for, love, Helpless, but cared for. Mm. Oh, that's just a wonderful description. Mm. How wonderful. Mm. I appreciate that cooked. You, 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 you picked, you went through it, you did a little boiling up, you did a little processing, you cooked that up. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. Loved, helpless, but cared for. Mm. Right on. Okay. So for the rest of class, you do not have to bother putting your feelings into words. All you have to do is just get in touch with your body. We're going to learn some things about how feelings work in the body. We're going to take that into a deeper and deeper level. So all you have to do is just get comfortable. Okay, whatever that is for you. And I'm kind of thinking, why don't we start the meditation now? So that way I can read this while we're in the meditation. Because, you know, the whole point of these worksheets is to learn by doing, you know. So what I always say, in, uh, or as I said last week, notice your breath. Notice your breath. You are breathing whether you want to or not. It's just happening. It's just happening. Not here to judge the breath, tell it what to do, open your eyes, close your eyes, you can do whatever you want. Sit, stand, just notice the breath, it's just happening. And notice if Bringing your consciousness to it changes your speed, the speed of your breath. See if you can slow it down and relax. Let yourself relax. Hmm. Actually, you know, these were some wonderful adjectives here for your feelings. So let's just go with loved, loved. Let yourself feel loved. Yeah, whatever that would be for you, 
whatever images, the mind only sees four things, thoughts, feelings, bodily sensations, and images. Loved, see what thoughts, feelings, bodily sensations, and images come up for you. When you think of, I feel loved. And this is your imagination. So, you know, you can think of your real life. You can make something up. You know, I just see, I see picnics with moms and little kids playing. Loved. Mom made all the food. Love. Love. You know, thinking of moments, my, thinking of moments my mom woke up after me and started making breakfast and she gave me a little hug and said, good morning. Loved. Mm, I'm thinking about the times I make a nice meal for myself. I love to cook, love to cook for myself. And it's a way I show myself love. So when I sit down to eat a bomb ass meal, I know I'm giving myself love here. Loved. Whatever comes up for you when you think loved, allow that feeling to flow into your heart into your heart. We spend so much time in our brain. Let it just drop like honey, flow with the energy down into your heart. Down into your heart. Let it just, you know, you got options. You can let it just drop it like a, just a waterfall, just woof down into your heart. Or you can let it trickle down like little bits of rain. Just get in touch with that flow, whatever it is for you, into your heart. The emotions are a fundamental part of how we develop knowledge to understand ourselves in the world. They determine the quality of our lives. Some people call emotions the guidepost of life because they teach us what our boundaries are. In fact, you could say that every day, every moment, we live in an emotional universe that uses how we feel to guide us through life. We know this because an emotional communication is always taking place alongside any verbal or other communication. There is always what is said and what is felt. Or as the late great Maya Angelou used to say, People may forget what you said, they may even forget what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. Emotions are part of the deeper back brain of your limbic system, amygdala, and most importantly, the heart. The heart is actually surrounded by several neurons that control your heartbeat and your feelings. These are the parts of you that were around when you were a tiny baby and did not have a developed prefrontal cortex. As a baby, you are born completely helpless, helpless, yet highly emotionally developed. So as babies, we all struggle to deal with intense emotions, even when we can barely think or control our bodies. Thus, emotional recognition and connection is fundamental to life. This is why babies need loving touch in order to survive and why love is a deep need for all of us. So let yourself feel loved. Let yourself feel it. Sink back down into your heart. And you know, the beautiful thing about the feeling of loved is, is unconditional love. Unconditional love means whatever comes up, I'm here. If, if, it's, if it tastes like peppermint, I'm here. If it tastes like shit, <laughs> I'm here. 
I'm here, right? If it, if it feels like a massage, I'm here. If it feels like, mm, you know, swallowing needles, I'm here. I'm going to be here for you because I love you that much. That is unconditional love. And we all want unconditional love from somebody, but the number one person we really need to get it from has got to be us. So use this moment and just feel into your heart, loved. Give yourself a lot of compassion for whatever comes up. And if it's hard to feel hurtful, painful, just honor the pain. It's okay to honor any pain, blame, shame, guilt, anything. Whatever you're feeling is what you need to be feeling right now to understand your feelings. Oh, I'm so glad to be hearing these words. Oh, mm. permission to feel. Hmm. So because our brain only perceives thoughts, feelings, sensations, and images, our emotional system can only respond to our thoughts, giving them a corresponding emotional weight we perceive as reality. This means fundamentally emotions are always the byproduct of something you are thinking. Our beliefs shape what feels real for us. I didn't believe this until I tested it out and it appears to be true. We have a thought about something and then we produce a feeling in relation to that thought. So we think I hate broccoli, then we see broccoli and feel sick. Without the thought happening first, there could not be an emotional reaction. Even if you get a sudden emotional reaction like curiosity or a bad vibe, even if you are totally right about the person or situation, your reaction is still in response to the thoughts you had even if the thoughts were unconscious. Some of our most powerful emotional reactions are from our unconscious thoughts. We produce a feeling so that we are prompted into action, like saying I won't eat it or running away. Since feelings determine our quality of life, it's always think, feel, act, have. Okay. Okay, so let's give this a shot here. I'm just uh, curious, but what would the opposite of love to be? You know, a good way to practice these emotions is to practice one and then try an opposite. So what, what would the opposite of love to be? What would your opposite be? And pick the word that would mean the meaningful word for you. Opposite of love. You know, there's lots of different words for that there. <laughs> there's lots of different words for that there. You know, one opposite for loved is hated. One opposite for loved might be unsupported. Another opposite might be feared. There's all kinds of opposites for love, actually. So what would, what would your opposite be? You know, we're just practicing feelings. Mm, and, uh, you know, if I, if I sit with the options I just gave here, I'd say feared is a good one. I like feared. That's a good one. That's a good one. We're just practicing feelings. So we just practice loved. It felt pretty nice, actually. It was kind of nice. It was like an instant jacuzzi, really. 
Let's try fear. Let's try fear. 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 Or we could try helpless, but helpless is another one. <laughs> That's a good one too. Afraid and helpless. Naked and afraid. We can go with that. That sounds good. Naked and afraid. Fear. Helpless. Yeah. Feel that. Just feel that for a second. Use your mind. Scan the thoughts. Imagine a situation where you might feel that, you know? Hopeless and afraid. Like if I was naked in the wild. Um, helpless and afraid. Hmm. Oh, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm seeing images of I'm running to the bank account and all the money's gone. Helpless and afraid. Um, oh, oh, I get to my apartment and all my stuff's already on the sidewalk. It's all been just evicted. And I'm like, what the hell? And I don't know what to do. I'm just like, just in a stun, stun mode, helpless and afraid. Maybe, maybe, hey, you know, maybe you started to get COVID. You all of a sudden you notice you don't, you don't have a sense of taste anymore. And then and, and you don't know what to do about it. And, and you're just standing there in the bathroom mirror and you're kind of freaking out and you're helpless and afraid. Let's see what that feels like. Scan your body, just get in touch with it. See what that feels like. Whatever came up for you. Thoughts, bodily sensations. Yeah, I can feel my feel myself rocking back and forth. I can feel my heart racing. You know, I have to say love felt a lot more open and free. This feels much more constricted. Mm, yeah, I can feel my brain like, like getting heavy. I'm trying to think, 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 think. Think, think my way out of this. And whatever you felt. Just bring that feeling into your heart. The heart is the place that processes feeling, not your head. Bring it into your heart. Whether it feels good or bad, that's unconditional love, right? All those moments where you feel afraid, that's the time when you need it the most. So bring it into your heart. And you know, whatever you're feeling, you're more than welcome to get in touch with your body, tap it out, you know, get in, move your body energy around, give yourself a hug, keep your eyes open or closed, whatever you need to get in touch with these feelings, okay? A lot of times we think we're feeling our feelings, but we're not really going that deep. Okay, so we're going to go deep today. Hmm. Many of us, and especially if you were born male, are taught not to feel in our society. All of us on some level have been taught to suppress, deny, or evade emotions because they are inconvenient, too difficult, or secondary to our other life responsibilities. When we don't feel our emotions, they build up under the surface or hide behind walls, meaning a little on top can mean a lot underneath. Since our feelings are our connection to our true self, not listening to your feelings is a kind of self-abandonment. Your own feelings may not trust you and go into denial or develop secondary emotions to cover up the emotions you can't handle, like getting angry when you are hurt or afraid when you are vulnerable. You may also become extremely judgmental, feel numb all the time, develop addictions, or pursue unhealthy relationships, like me. <laughs> Be
Becoming an adult involves taking responsibility for yourself, being financially independent, making your own mistakes, letting go of other people's responsibilities, and taking responsibility for our feelings. If you have been through anything traumatic, or if your boundaries were ever majorly violated, your emotional guidance system can go haywire. Trauma disrupts how the two parts of your brain interact and can lead to hyperarousal, obsessive thinking, and memory emotional flashbacks that can severely disrupt your sense of reality. You may be extra sensitive to others' emotions, like an empath or a rescuer, or identify with an emotion like an angry person or a victimized person a hurt person. Abuse, emotional boundary violations, can teach us to accept self-boundaries that leave us hurt, afraid, codependent, helpless, or empty. If we were not taught how to deal with our feelings, then this damage can lay underneath any kind of healthy boundaries we use to build our adult lives. Mm. Yeah. You know, some of us just asking for a hug can be a super difficult thing to do, you know? I need help can be a super difficult thing. Just to speak your pain can be a super difficult thing to do. Emotions all come from the same place. It's not like some come from the heart and some come from your butt. <laughs> so when you block yourself from feeling an emotion like something sad or traumatic, you block yourself from feeling all your other emotions too. Instead of judging our emotions as good, bad, right, wrong, it may be better to see our emotions as an infinite palette of different colors. And each experience of our emotional universe brings us closer to a full painting of life. Or we have to feel all our feels so that we can heal. We have to feel all the feels so we can heal. Since feelings come from thoughts and thoughts are not real, we can question if any feeling is real as well. In Buddhism, sitting with our feelings, whatever they are, without trying to fight, change, or deny them, is called the practice of equanimity. For example, if I feel angry but couldn't call it anger, it might be called hurt. If I couldn't call it hurt, it might be fear. And if I kept digging like this, it would become stuck, then uncomfortable, just the feeling I don't like, a feeling, just what is, then nothingness. Hey, you know, if I couldn't call it love, it would be cherished. If I couldn't call it cherished, it would be important. If I couldn't call it important, it would be meaningful. If I couldn't call it meaningful, it would be on it, it would be me, me, meaningful to me. So it would be me, me, <laughs> me, me. If I couldn't call it me, it would be I. If I couldn't call it I, <clears throat> if I couldn't call it I, it would be just what is. And if I couldn't call it just what is, it would be nothingness, nothingness. Hmm. Ain't that cool? <laughs> you can deconstruct anything like that. Sit with it long enough, keep working on a different word for it, you can break it down into nothingness. This works great. However, this old school approach leads many spiritual people to detach from thoughts and feelings as a way to avoid or invalidate others, which is called spiritual bypassing. If the majority of our thoughts are negative, or if we have been through abuse or trauma, just sitting in silence can be triggering. 
So since feelings come from the heart, not the brain, we can stop using thoughts to analyze our feelings and instead bring them into our heart and process them directly, directly through our body. This is called emotional meditation or emotional vipassana. And our emotional universe works generally in terms of negative and positive. So while there are many emotions, all emotions have their opposite. Feeling through the emotion and its opposite can retrain your emotional guidance system by breaking up old or distorted thought and feeling patterns. Simply building our capacity to feel can greatly help us to take responsibility for our lives and give us space to love ourselves. Okay, let's try another emotion. Let's try another one. Let's go with optimistic. 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 Let yourself feel optimistic. If you're not feeling optimistic right now, think and use your imagination. Imagine a situation where you might be optimistic. You know, I got some lottery tickets and I, I waited two days to scratch them just so I could sit there and see them on the counter and feel optimistic. Mm. tried a new recipe for making some cornbread. I was hoping it would come out. I was really excited to eat it. You know, I had to wait 20 minutes for it to cook. And in those 20 minutes, I was feeling optimistic. You know, school year just ended. Oh, well, I didn't mention this before, but actually on Friday, I got a letter confirming that I'm getting tenure. <laughs> so I, yeah, I am now a tenured college professor. So that's pretty uh, fucking cool. Okay. Culmination of a dream come true for me. So that's pretty, pretty wonderful. Despite all the other things going on in my life, that's a super fantastic, wonderful thing. So I'm really super happy about that. Now I'm optimistic, optimistic. So whatever came up for you, optimistic. You know, you may be in the most pessimistic place on planet Earth right now, and we're just imagining things, right? So, you know, if I was in the most pessimistic place on planet Earth right now, what would even optimistic be for me? You know, hey, maybe, maybe all of a sudden, literally all the war on planet Earth just stops. Everyone just has a big, there's a big like sound, a boom, and everyone just goes, what? Uh, no, this is just not, not working. No, no, we, we're going to do something else now. I think peace is the way forward. Okay, now that, that, may, that may never happen on the actual planet Earth, but it can happen in your mind right now, right? That's the power of imagination. If I said, hey, you know, you're turned into a blue dinosaur and go flying around the moon, you can do that right now <laughs> because that is the power of your imagination. All right, so we, we have to imagine world peace because Lord, oof. <laughs> Hmm, optimistic. We have to imagine optimism. Yeah, it needs to, it needs to live there. It needs to live there. So whatever optimism would be for you. You know, I'm just, I'm seeing, I'm driving around and I'm just seeing people hugging each other for no reason. They're just ripping the mask off. They've all been vaccinated. They're just hugging each other, just wildly hugging each other. Hmm. In the nice spring weather, optimistic, optimistic. And whatever came up for you, let it sink down into your heart. Let it go down slowly, drip down like honey. Just nourishment into your heart. And if this is a struggle for you, you can put your hands on your heart also at any time. Use your body, that's what it's here for. And just sink into that feeling there. You know, they say the heart energy is like 10 times stronger than the brain. So the heart really can process it. Those neurons really can do it. Just sink it down to your heart, optimism. Just see what that feels like in your body, in your heart for you.
Flow with that emotional energy. Whatever it feels like, just flow with it. And, you know, acknowledge any, anything underneath it, you know, any pain, hurt, anything that may be difficult underneath this feeling. Give yourself compassion. You know, this heart just beats and beats and beats. There's no point in time where your heart just goes, what did he say to me? Uh, no, I'm out of here. I mean, you, you're going to put what in here? Uh, no, 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 no. I, gone. Okay. It just, it just does its job constantly for, for us. Just give your heart a lot of compassion. Take a few breaths, rise up out of it, come to a bit, and just ask yourself, okay, optimism. So what's the opposite? What's the opposite of optimism? Oh, thank you guys, thank you. What's the opposite of optimism? I suppose that's an easy one there, right? We could just go with pessimism. So let's just give that a shot, pessimism. Pessimism. It may not be pleasant, but it's an important feeling and we need to feel all our feelings. That's half the whole thing about feelings. This is a whole world of feelings. We just don't really want to feel because they <laughs> don't feel all that great. It's like a world where you think you can only eat cake and get by just fine. That isn't a real world. It's just not a real world. Okay, pessimism. Rejection. Hey, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Things we know well. <laughs> yes. Pessimism, rejection, let yourself feel it. Let yourself feel it. We're just practicing. We're practicing for when we might need it. Okay, you open the letter. I, I checked that email and that email said, unfortunately, we do not think he's ready, blah, 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 no tenure. Oh, and I had my hopes up and I just feel that dashing feeling in my heart, burn. You know, some of us, we applied to college and we applied to several schools. So we got letters back that said, you did not get into this school. Rejection. You know, maybe your, your partner said, you know, it's, just, it's not really you, it's me. I need to go. I, you know, it's just, I'm working on my own stuff. But you know, really underneath it all, they only said all that because that was an easy way for them to break up with you. And they're, they're walking out of the door right now. It's the final goodbye. They, 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 they've got a plant in their hand. They're walking out the door. And you don't want to say it, but you know deep down inside, you feel rejection. You're wondering why couldn't it be different? Why couldn't it work out? And you're feeling pessimism, pessimism. You know, my, we had a faculty meeting where we talked about a year of discussing Black lives and most of the faculty hadn't really put much energy into discussing those things. And then suddenly we're, we're yet again, a year later talking about initiatives to address things. We're starting to address things again a year later. And I had to say, you know, I gotta be honest with you. I kind of feel like a lot more people are gonna die. <laughs> They're gonna be a lot more George Floyds. And uh, I know you all, I don't know if you all want to hear that or not, but that is my black pessimism right there. Pessimism, pessimism. It's, it's there, it's not going anywhere. Like the wages in America, they're not going up. <laughs> okay, and fight for 15, that's gonna happen for the next 10 years. 
pessimism. <laughs> oh, pessimism, pessimism. Mm. Mm. The time I went walking in San Francisco past a beef shop and I saw a super tiny little cube of steak, like some expensive Wagyu, something, something beef, whatever. That was $100 for this tiny little cut. And you know, there were people in that shop who were buying that beef for their, probably for their goddamn dog. And I felt <laughs> pessimism. Rejection also. Rejection, because I, I didn't even want to walk into the store. Rejection. Pessimism. Whatever came up for you. Those were some interesting examples. Whatever came up for you. Slow it down. Let it sink into your heart. It's your pessimism. It's not going anywhere. Shaming it away doesn't help. Mm, sure don't. Mm. Just flow with the energy you're feeling, whatever it is. Unconditional love, flow with it, whatever it is. Hmm. Just give yourself a lot of compassion. Just think, honor any pain you might be feeling when you meet these feelings. Any stress, any difficulty. I know it's hard. Feelings are hard. Life is hard. You know, I said that choose your hard stuff earlier and sometimes you don't even get to choose your heart. It's that hard. You just gotta like, it can just feel like you're on a, 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 a broken raft going through a very fast moving river sometimes. Life can feel like all sorts of crazy things. But at least if we give ourselves the space to actually feel them, we can honor what we feel so we won't feel so lost. And then let's, let's take a moment to just validate these feelings we're having. Well, first of all, take a moment and just notice the difference between rejection, pessimism, and go back to optimism. Go back to optimism. Just use your imagination, poof, back to optimism. And just notice the range. Just notice the range. It's like the Grand Canyon. Just notice the whole range of your emotional universe. Hmm. How powerful, huh? Vast. And let's give ourselves some validation for going through this. So you can say these words in your mind. You can come up with your own. But here's something to get you started. I love myself whether I feel optimistic or pessimistic. I can support myself whether I am optimistic or feeling rejection. I have every right to feel the way I feel about optimism. I have every right to feel the way I feel about rejection. Anyone who went through what I went through would feel that way. I don't totally understand how I feel about these feelings and I don't need to. I can give it time and space and rest. I care about these feelings of optimism and pessimism. I care about these feelings because they matter to me. My feelings matter to me. My personal favorite is I let go of optimism. I let go of pessimism. I let go of rejection. I let go of everything because love is letting go. 
But you know, even a simple, hey, good job feeling your feelings, dude. You got you, boo. <laughs> I feel you, man. Even that, just that alone can get you really far in getting in touch with validating your own feelings. Man, good job, dude. That was deep as shit. Whew. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to take this. I know that was interesting. Now we're going to take this to the next level. We're doing a body scan. Okay, so that's in, what's, what we're learning how to do here today is just taking our feelings all through our body. Okay, let's just take a couple of breaths. Take off the sweater. We managed to get to our heart. It's so important. <laughs> so important for understanding our feelings. Okay. So now we're going to just take it to a little deeper. So just breathe. I can read these words first. So we can just have a little, little, little moment, a little breather moment. Get in touch, maybe get some water or some stretches. Okay. So we're going to learn a little bit about the body here. This comes from the book, The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk and Cloud and Townsend's Boundaries. And this also comes from uh, the video, uh, a YouTube video by Psalm Isadora called Tantra, The Art of Sacred Sexuality. And Tantra is a um, spiritual practice and that I'm gonna read about later. And Psalm Isadora was a uh, sexual, spiritual teacher person who was a super beautiful woman on YouTube, but uh, she passed away a few years ago. She left us lots of bits of wisdom. Our feelings make up our emotional universe, but feeling is not just an emotional state, it's also our bodily sensations. I can activate the feelings in my right toe by just thinking about it. I can describe what I feel as a feeling, like calm or hurt or inspired, or as a sensation like burning, soreness, tight. I can go further and, and describe the feeling in terms of size, movement, shape, or any other quality. I can go from my right toe all the way up to my head, taking in each body part. This is known as a body scan meditation which comes from the school of Tantra, a philosophy that is about seeing the body as a spiritual place of energy transference. Our higher power gave us a body so we can take in and give out the energy of the universe, fulfilling our life's purpose. By doing a body scan, we can greatly examine our emotions through the brain-body connection. In terms of evolution, human beings have the same basic senses, emotions, and physical reactions as all other mammals. Our hair stand up when we're afraid. We snarl when we're enraged. But a larger frontal lobe, and so a greater capacity to think. However, since our brain is still 80% emotional and unconscious, and that's right, our brain is 80% emotional and unconscious. Our animal nature will always win out over our willpower four out of five times. Modern psychology has found that while the body cannot think, it does keep score by holding both emotional energy and memories. A frightening incident can make you lose your voice or a pain in your back can be from years of not getting the support you needed. While your rational brain can analyze, justify, and or dissociate from your experiences, your emotional body cannot. This is why you can't rationally talk yourself out of your feelings or from what you really want or who you feel you really are inside. We often use knowledge to fight our body limitations but as animals, we will always end up compromising between our ideals and what our body can actually handle. Our body is an important part of understanding our physical and emotional boundaries. A healthy boundary is like a building with doors or a fence with gates. Most of it strongly keeps bad things out, 
but part of it can deliberately let good things in. Boundaries denote ownership, or what is mine and what is yours. How our boundaries were treated, how our bodies were treated as babies and children shape our first emotional boundaries and what to expect from others. Since research has shown that the brain processes emotional pain in the same manner as physical pain, abuse and trauma are by default internal emotional boundary violations. Not feeling accepted or loved can feel like a literal stab in the heart. Oh. Mm. Our bodies remember the fear, shame of a spanking, even if our brain does not. Since the body will remember the trauma and keep reacting to it, you may lose the ability to distinguish between safety and danger. Always assume danger and then stay stuck in anger or fear. A lack of safety in our primary relationships can make us into adults who have an impaired sense of inner reality, feel places of deadness or numbness inside, gravitate toward unhealthy situations like me, like me, <laughs> and treat ourselves poorly by engaging in risky self-damaging behavior, making us feel unsafe in our own bodies. Research has even found that babies who are abused can develop infant depression or constant feelings of terror that can stick with them throughout life. Hmm. Oh. Oh. Long term, all this can lead to migraines, asthma, back pain, headaches, weight gain, poor sleep, and perhaps even irritable bowel syndrome. Healing our brain body connection means recognizing and naming our physical sensations. We can move past the difficulty of words by engaging the self-observing body-based system, which speaks through sensations, tone of voice, and body tensions. We can learn to pendulate or move in and out of our body sensations. We start by establishing an inner place of safety or a place where you can ground yourself when you're feeling comfortable, like focusing on the breath, clenching your hands and feet, tapping, this teaches us to overcome any dissociation we have with our body memories. Making friends with your body, mm, making friends with your body, also means examining our body narratives, the way we talk about our body and our body memories, and examining our feelings. Our body's feelings shift constantly. If we develop equanimity, and we let ourselves fully experience the feelings. It will eventually shift into something else. It may take you back to a memory or a thought you are holding on to that is not serving you well. Other safe ways of learning how to reconnect to your body are meditation and yoga because these techniques calm us down and let us check in on our breath and heart rate. While every area of the body is important, there are three key areas to really focus on. The stomach, the heart, and the head. Our stomach has been found to hold neurons that control not only the movement of food, but also our instantaneous bodily responses to fear and safety. This is why we call it the gut brain. Our body can store memories in our gut that tell us to be careful or afraid. Our heart also has neurons that control heartbeat and regulate our emotions. 
Our heart brain tells us how we feel and holds happiness and sadness. And our head area, including the neck and shoulders, is where most thought happens. This is also where we store anger, frustration, and tension. Mm -hmm. Like it or not, this body is the only one you're ever gonna have. Plus or minus maybe a little plastic surgery, who knows, <laughs> but more or less. And you have little control over what's gonna happen to it. Getting in touch with how we feel about our body is the best we can do to care for ourselves in an immediate and intrinsic way, to heal our internal emotional boundary violations and to develop wisdom that moves our lives toward a whole body experience in harmony with the universe. And that is what we're about to get in touch with right now, the whole body experience in harmony with the universe. So just take a moment. Notice your breath. Now, at this point in the class, I'm pretty sure you're feeling pretty deep. You can feel yourself really inside in your feelings. So just take in your emotional universe. Take in whatever you're feeling, head to toe, the whole thing. Just take it in. Notice your breath. Go back to the breath. Just notice the breath. If anything ever gets too intense for you, always go back to the breath. And you do not have to keep your eyes closed. You're just Back to the breath, back to the breath. Even when you say, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, you're still breathing, still breathing. Back to the breath, back to the breath. The mind, the mind can't breathe super well. The imagination can't breathe super well. You can panic forever, but the breath will keep on breathing. Just go back to the breath. And now notice your mind. Notice your mind. Just notice whatever's going on in your inner, inner mental universe. You know, you might, you might, it might feel heavy, it might feel light. You might feel like a hamster running on a wheel nonstop. It might feel like just having nothing going on, just a sleeping snake. Just lazy sneak. Who knows? Whatever you feel, just honor whatever's in your mind all the energy that's there. And I want you to drop all that energy down into your two feet. Just like we dropped it into our heart, sink it all the way down, all the way down into your two feet. Bring all your consciousness to your two feet. Assuming you have two feet, whatever feet you have, assuming you have feet at all, and if you don't have feet, imagine feet. Bring, <laughs> just bring it down into the lowest appendage you have. I want to make sure I'm, I'm inclusive for everybody there. Just bring it all down there and just feel. Notice what you feel in your supposed feet in this moment. Big feelings or small feelings, things that move, things that don't move. Take in every little, little feeling, big feelings and little feelings. And whatever you are feeling, I invite you, if you are willing to slow it down, slow it down. Sink down to the bottom of your feeling, of this feeling in your feet. Sink in and let go. Let go, disperse, unclench, let go. Hmm. Like it's just the best jacuzzi in the world. Just flow with the feelings. Just flow with it in and out, up and down, wherever it goes, just flow with it.
Oh, give your feet a lot of compassion. You know? Whatever happens to your feet, your feet don't decide to just say, I'm sick of this and get up and leave. They don't get an ego of their own. Just give yourself, give your feet a lot of love, understanding, compassion, for whatever you're feeling in this moment. And bring that feeling that you feel in your feet. Since the heart processes emotions, bring that feeling into your heart. Get connected. The heart needs to know how the feet feel. Sink it down deeper, deeper into your heart. Then bring it into your gut. Feel it in your gut for a bit. What I notice, it kind of just flashes out, let it get real big for a second, let it pop for a bit. Then bring it down into the muscles in your the big muscles in your hips, your thighs, your behind, your seat muscles. Bring it down into those muscles and give them a squeeze. And then push the feeling away. Let it get real big and just push it away. Push it away. Whatever you felt in your feet, may it be filled with peace relaxation, compassion, love. Okay, and that is a whole body scan of, of your feet there. We're gonna do that for every single part all the way up. So you can experience your whole inner universe, inner universe of your body. Next is the calves and the knees. Bring your awareness to your calves and your knees. If you're not sure you have calves and knees still, you may want to give them a squeeze just to make sure they're still there. Notice all the big parts and the little parts. Whatever you're feeling, stressful parts, relaxed parts, bone and muscle, bone and, and uh, tissue, ligaments, Whatever you are feeling from your calves and knees in this moment, I invite you to slow it down. Slow it down to stillness. Like you're just Sink down to the bottom. And let go. Let go like you're unclenching a fist. Giving someone else the remote. Let go of all the control. Remote control. Let go. Just flow with the feeling. Flow with whatever you are feeling in your calves, knees.
Give yourself a lot of compassion. You've been through a lot. Mm, I can see every memory of scrapes, mm, bruises, stubs, stubbing my knee on something, a coffee table. Oh. Mm, compassion. And you know what, if any time you can't give yourself compassion, can you give yourself compassion? Can you, can you give compassion to the part of you that said no? Can you give compassion to the part of you that said no? And if you can't give compassion to the part that said no, can you give compassion to the part that lives next to the part that said no, that has to put up with that part all the time? Gotta start somewhere. Compassion starts somewhere. Whatever you're feeling in your calves and knees, bring that feeling into your heart. And it float up, bubble in, into your heart, get connected. Let it sink down to your gut. Let it get real big in your gut for just a second and sink it down into your hips, the big muscles in your hips and thighs, your seat muscles, give them a squeeze. Ooh, and then let the feeling, we'll push it all away, push it all away, push it all away. Whatever you felt in your, calves and knees, may it be filled with peace, relaxation, comfort, and love. Okay, next is our seat muscles. Those muscles, those big muscles in our thighs, our hips, our behind, maybe even the lower back. See what you feel in your seat muscles in this moment. Things may feel heavy or light, tense, relaxed. Mm. Whatever you are feeling, Spots of pressure, spots of no pressure. Strong bony spots and soft fleshy spots. Whatever you are feeling, things that twitch and things that don't twitch. Oh, whatever you are feeling, not here to judge. Just notice. Slow it all down, slow it all down, sink in, and let go. Let yourself flow with the feelings in your seat. Mm. 
Ooh. As you can go into each muscle and just let go of each muscle, bit by bit. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh. Let go. Give yourself a lot of compassion. Give yourself a lot of compassion. You know, my behind did a lot of sitting about this whole coronavirus thing with all these Zoom classes, you know? And no point did my behind just go, oh, no, <clears throat> I don't feel like doing this, gone. It just endured the pain. Yeah, give yourself compassion. Give your seat muscles compassion. <laughs> Rub some compassion on that ass, okay? <laughs> Somebody make a song about that, okay? I want to hear that in the club. <sighs> Mm, yeah, I want to hear that. Compassion. And whatever you're feeling in your seat muscles, bring it into your heart. Be in touch with these feelings in your heart. Mm. Push it down into your gut. Let it blow up in your gut. Ooh, and then push it down into your seat muscles. Give your seat muscles a squeeze. Helps release that energy. And let the feeling get bigger and blow it away. Push the whole thing away. Whatever you feel in your seat muscles, may they be filled with comfort, relaxation, peace, love, support, and love. Okay, now we're going to tap into these three critical areas. Three critical areas. The first is our stomach, our gut. Get in touch with your gut. If you want, you're free to place your hands on your gut. See what you feel there. Oh, tension. <laughs> oh, or relaxation. Tightness or looseness. Tightness or flabbiness. Yeah, you might feel muscle or little pockets of fat. Smooth skin or hairiness, whatever you feel. Cramps, space, whatever you feel. Not here to judge. No right, wrong, no good, bad.
You might feel something happy. You might feel something scary. Whatever you feel, slow it down. If it helps, you can just rock with it a little bit. Slow it down. Sink down to the bottom. And let go. Unclench like you're releasing a fist. Dropping all the armor. Just flow with it as best as you can. It doesn't have to make sense. You don't have to rationalize any of it. We are just experiencing our body. Mm. Give yourself a lot of compassion. You know, whatever's down there could have been there a long time. Never gets too intense, just go back to the breath. Breath's not going anywhere. Or that is, if the breath does go somewhere, then you don't have a problem anymore. You stop breathing. <laughs> You won't have to worry about your feelings if you stop breathing, you know. Whatever you're feeling, bring it into your heart. Bring it into your heart. Oh. Oh. and bring it back down into your gut let your gut get really big let it flash really big then ooh, bring it down into your seat muscles give them a big squeeze ooh, and then let push all that Stuff away, push all that stuff in your gut away. And whatever you felt in your gut, may it be filled with peace, openness, receptivity, sensitivity, nourishment. And love, always love. The next big key area is our heart. If you want, you can place your hands on your heart. 
See what you feel in your heart in this moment. Big feelings, small feelings, feelings that move, stuck feelings. You feel a pounding, you may feel nothing, silence. Things may be warm or they may be cold. Whatever you're feeling in your heart, not here to judge, not here to judge, just here to notice, Slow it down. Slow it down. Sink down to the bottom. Down to the bottom. And let go. Mm. Mm. Like Jacques Cousteau in the deepest part of the ocean, deep diver, way down there. Sink in and let go. Just flow with the feeling. Mm. Mm -hmm. oh, give your give your heart a lot of compassion. The ever beating heart. Mm. You know, you had a rough day and you just couldn't take it anymore. Your heart didn't go, no, I can't do this, no, and just jump right out your chest and leave. Took the blow. It took the blow because your heart loves you that much. Even if you go numb, your heart went numb because your heart loves you. It did it so you could survive. Mm, unconditional love. Just sink even deeper into your heart, even deeper. Ooh, whatever comes up, just let it come. Sink even deeper. Let the heart just expand and expand and expand.
and let it sink down into your gut. Let your gut flash really big. And then sink it down into your seat muscles. Give your seat muscles a squeeze. And then let the feeling get big and push it away. Push it away everywhere. And whatever you felt in your heart, may it be filled with understanding, peace, validation, acceptance, and love. And finally, the next area is our head, neck and shoulders, head. And shoulders. Put your hand somewhere, somewhere in on your head, neck, and shoulder. Maybe your temples. Maybe your, maybe your whatever this muscle is called that I cannot think of right now. Maybe your neck. Place your hands and see what you feel in your head, neck, and shoulders in this moment. You know, if you're feeling tension, you may want to do a little maybe head stretches, neck stretches. Just move in there. You know, you might feel crazy strong tension, or you may feel relaxed at ease. You may have light feelings or heavy feelings. Things that move or places that feel stuck. Your mind may be still and calm, you know, like a frozen over lake. Or your mind might be the hamster in the wheel or the 4th of July, just, just firecrackers everywhere. Just boom, 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 boom. Whatever you are feeling in your head, neck, and shoulders, I invite you to slow it down. Just watch the hamster slow down. Slow it down. Sink down to the bottom. Drop your defenses. Flow with the feeling. Give yourself a lot of compassion. You know, our mind can be our best friend or our worst enemy. 
And either way, it's us. So we have to give ourselves unconditional love. Just let it all sink into your heart. Let it sink down even deeper into your gut. Lash really big in your gut. And then let it move down into your seat muscles. Give them all a squeeze. And then push all these feelings away. Push them all away. Whatever you felt in your head, neck, and shoulders, mm, may it be filled with relaxation, stillness, peace, compassion, and love. Just take a moment and take in your whole body, head to toe, whole thing. And just give ourselves a lot of gratitude. Thank you for taking the time to get in touch with yourself on such an intimate level, bit by bit. Thank you for showing me that all my little feelings matter. Thank you for showing me my body matters. My feelings about my body matter. Hmm. Thank you for listening. Thank you for teaching me how to take care of myself at all in a new way. I don't have to know everything I feel about my body right now, and I don't have to. I can give it time. My body deserves time and space and rest. I don't have to judge my body to love my body. In fact, often, <laughs> often removing all the judgment is way more loving. And may everyone in the world have an opportunity to get in touch with their inner life, their body, the way we have today. Okay, when you feel comfortable, you can slowly let yourself rise. Mm.
Fully let yourself rise back, rise back to back to consciousness, back to outer space. We went into inner space, and we have to come back out into outer space. And that is a whole body scan. That is digging into your feelings head to toe. Like I said, most of us think we're digging into our feelings, but we're really just scratching the surface. That was a whole complete bodily experience. So please practice, so please practice. No feeling is a one and done kind of thing. It can really go that deep. You know, you might think it's not even a big deal because we're so used to treating our feelings on the surface. Then you actually sit with it and it's like, holy smokes. It can go all the way down to your feet, all the way up to your head, everywhere. Super deep, super deep. that You wouldn't know if you don't make the time to investigate. So please practice, please practice. You are worth it, you are worth it. Okay. Okay, so why don't we just take a moment and just make some space if anyone would like to share any thoughts, feelings, you know, anything, anything. Questions, anything. And of course, whatever you're feeling, whatever you're feeling, if you, if you felt something great, that's wonderful. And if you felt something difficult, hard, shitty, that's wonderful too, because we're learning how to feel. We have to feel all our feels so that we can heal. Right? Each, each feeling is a color in the painting. You can't, you can't make a whole painting of your life if you leave all the black out, you know? If you take all the purple out, you, you won't have, you know, painting. Hmm, I'm ready to sleep. Amen. I'm with you on that. <laughs> Thank you for the guided meditation. We'll be praying for you. Thank you. Please do. The more, hey, I even went to the store and I bought a guardian angel candle. You know, these like Virgin de Guadalupe candles. <laughs> I bought one of those candles too. Okay. What, what, what? I'm taking everything. Wonderful friends have shown up to offer me things and give me help to help me get by. I mean, every step of the way of this, it's been, and don't get me wrong, I'm not exactly happy this happened to me. It's very messed up that this happened to me. But uh, so many beautiful things keep coming into my path since it's happened that I got to say, I just feel like it's almost the universe lining this up. So. I'm just going to let my heart keep going where it's going and see where it takes me. It's all anyone can do in life. So, And thank God I have all these exercises to help me deal with my feelings. That's the best part. So I'm really doing the work. It's no bullshit. It's no bullshit, baby. It's no bullshit. Okay. So please practice. And as, like I said, if you're interested at all, you're more than welcome to leave a donation. But the most important part of your donation is to receive these gifts receive these gifts actually practice on your feelings it means the world it means the world and if you can use these resources to help another person yeah that would mean a lot so many of us have a hard time with our feelings so you just learned a skill so if you can practice it with another person help them during a hard time man that'd be really great and if you're interested then next week we will have another exercise. We'll have another exercise. Hmm. The link is right here. And next week we'll have another exercise where we're gonna look at, oh, oh, I believe I'm putting this all together. Yes, yes. The final class, we put it all, oh, well, there's so many things here, boy. We're gonna put it all together into this final exercise called the ego killer, the ego killer. Ego killer. Oof. And that sounds tough, but it's more like an ego corrector. But I was so amazed at how powerful it was, I called it the ego killer. <laughs> so 
You're going to learn how to dig into your thinking. And uh, yeah, this really great exercise for really cleaning out what's going on inside of us. Okay, and no worries, I will guide us every step of the way through that too. Okay, well, thank you so much for coming to class. And thank you for reaching out and grabbing me out of my funk. I just, it really, I really, really super appreciate that. I really do, I really do. And hopefully I see you all next week. Okay, and bye. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thank you so much. Feel free to bring more people, yeah, anybody, anytime. You want to work on your feelings too. Okay. Hey, thank you so much. All right. Bye. Very welcome. Very welcome. Take care. You too. Later, Doctor. Have a good weekend. You too. You too. Nice meeting you. Uh